Ukrima Media's Polity Amtabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Satna, here to unpack his column titled The Contribution of the UDF and People's Power to Our Understanding of Freedom at Five. Why did the UDF and People's Power disappear? Because you seem to offer a conspiratorial theory in relation to the National Liberation Movement. Well, if you look at the um, commemoration of the UDF 40th anniversary, there's no mention at all of people's power. Uh, it's as if people's power didn't exist. Um, and what it seems to indicate is that the UDF represents some generalized commitment to freedom, which in, in the eyes of many people, as Frank Chicano put it, that it was the UDF was performing a holding action until the ANC returned. Now, I believe that the UDF was in some ways uh, part of the ANC. Many of us, many people were not part of the ANC, but many of us saw ourselves as ANC as well as UDF. But the UDF did something distinct, which the ANC could not do, as a purely political organization. The UDF existed because of its affiliates, its civics, its youth organizations, its sports organizations, its small business organizations. That's what gave the UDF its character. Without the affiliates, there would be no UDF. And the affiliates um, in the communities were part of creating people's power. Now, when the transition occurred, 30, 40,000 members of the UDF, mainly older people, were arrested, and the UDF People's Power period was very heavily wounded. And in the late 1980s, I wasn't there, I was myself detained, so I didn't see this, but there was a mass, the mass democratic movement emerged comprising the churches, SACC and organizations like that, and the unions. A UDF was banned, the people were in jail, and they couldn't de facto establish the structures, even if they wanted to, of street committees and things like that. So the mass democratic movement is not the UDF, but by standing in for the UDF and for people's power, they paved the way for the disappearance of these factors. In the light, late 1980s, there was insurrection, but there was also preparations for negotiations. And when the negotiations happened, people's power was not a factor in it. People were not, couldn't be involved in negotiations. Representatives were involved and they made complicated reports. It was, if insofar as they reported, it was not possible for them to involve the whole community in it. And these were technical reports, even to the national executive. I became a national executive member in 1991. And those reports were very complicated if you were not directly involved in negotiations. So in the period after, uh, during and after uh, the state of emergency, very few people wanted to talk about the popular. When I was involved in political education of the ANC, we believed that the ANC itself must have a popular base and itself be a popular organization, as it had been in the 1950s. But, you know, there was not a lot of enthusiasm for this. Even Comrade Nelson Mandela used to say leaders have to lead. In other words, you can't keep on going back to your constituency every five minutes asking them what they think. Now, what I think he was really saying, unlike the Mandela of the 1950s, is that once you're in government, you don't have these popular power organizations. Although Mandela always had a sympathy for the popular, he was... he he. When the people were butchered at Bishop, Mandela came there 
and he he was he was sympathetic to that march which was made following a decision of the national executive of the ANC but a lot of other people when i spoke to them you know there was not this enthusiasm there was a, some people who were very enthusiastic about people's power like chris late chris harney but a lot of the leaders were thinking ahead about what would happen when the ANC became the government so that was how i think it happened are you not exaggerating when you say that the popular movement had no part in what unfolded from the time of the mass democratic movement right down to the present i can't think of uh an involvement of the popular the popular is not when you vote for someone you vote for someone to represent you that's called representative democracy the popular is direct action where people take power over their own activities now some people are doing this now in south africa in places where there's crime and the police are not coming there i've heard about cases in kzn um but there was not enthusiasm f- for they would say you know you can't conduct negotiations or establish a government through a mass movement but there was not attention to trying to keep the popular alive to leave activities to communities to manage themselves there's no space for it it can't be part of a constitution but it had been a big part of our political thinking in the mid 1980s why was it dropped and also raymond how did the anc the udf and organs of people's power actually relate to one another um did they act together sabotage one another or what it's quite complicated because the udf was not set up by the anc although the anc wanted something like the udf it had been calling for something like the udf and oliver tumbo is interviewed about this and he says yes we wanted this we wanted all sorts of organizations to come together even ping pong clubs and things like that but we didn't set up the udf govern beki says anc set up the udf it's not accurate it was emanating from people within the country and it met the needs of the anc and many of us in the udf used to get guidance from the anc we would listen to radio freedom many of us were cadres of the anc or and or the sacp and we carried out what they wanted but we were very careful the anc and sacp were illegal organizations and the udf was a legal organization so it was very important to safeguard your legal activities so if one was involved in underground activities of the anc or the communist party you had to make sure that did that that did not compromise any office that one may have held as a udf leader or member of an affiliate so when when i was detained the second time during this emergency they were not able to charge me because i tried to safeguard the legal persona that i had as a member of the udf it's a paradox uh, there's a very thin line uh drawn between the organizations but the independence was important uh, when i say there's a thin line many of us who preserved our legal persona were also involved in, in insurrection we thought we would overthrow the government by force but at the same time during the day we were performing a perfectly legal role so it was complex but each organization was distinct that was professor raymond sadna speaking to crema media's polity about the contribution of the udf and people's power to our understanding of freedom at 5